So we're on part two. What they're stating is it does not tell us what the actual ideal flow rate is. It does tell us what the maximum fluid in each collector is at 0.43 gallon, but that's not what we're after. What we're after is what is the flow rate. I've got our actual Stiebel Eltron system and I just pulled it up directly. So I went to, down to page 8 and I went down to where it read pump settings. And according to the Soul 25 Plus and the 27 Plus, we need to be at 5 liters a minute or 300 liters per hour. And to convert that into correct unit for us in the United States, we need to be somewhere in the 1.3 gallons per minute and a total flow rate of 79 gallons per hour. So 1.3 gallons is what we're shooting for, a flow. And now we got to figure out what pressure to operate our system at. So let's go back to our image again here. So this pump is going to produce a flow. It needs to produce 1.3 gallons per minute of fluid flow through this closed loop system. And so the head pressure is the difference that we have to lift. In an open loop system, an open loop now, not closed like we're, we're going to be installing, but an open loop, we take the height of the difference between the two and that specific height becomes a head height. Now there's something different with with a static head pressure and a static pressure is something that is involved in the system that we can't get rid of. Elbows, the size of the piping, the fittings, how much restriction is in the collector itself, how much restriction is the inlet and the outlet of the pump, what kind of copper transfer system do we have on the heat exchanger. All of those things are going to add up to actual insertable loss that that pump has to overcome. Moving fluid is not a free process. There are so many dynamic variables that we have to overcome in order for us to get that fluid from the storage tank, from that heat exchanger to the collector, from the collector back to that heat exchanger and into the pump. So there are two key ingredients that we truly need to know about when we're doing this. The first thing that we need to know about here is what type of system do we have? Is it an open loop? Is it a closed loop? Second thing we need to know is what pipe size and what type of restrictions, insertable losses do we have there? And then after we know that, that will tell us how much flow with what type of fluid that we need to have in order to get this going. So we've got a whole bunch of things that are going on here that we really truly need to know. Let's take a look back at our closed loop system. So let's go back to our closed loop system. We know that the data sheet is a Wilo S16U15. So it's 130 volts. It's a star pump. So that means it's got an impeller. And then I've got this flow chart. Now this is for a star 21. I have the flow rate for this system right here and I have it listed. What this flow chart is showing me is it is a gradual decrease. Now there are two specific units that we're looking at on this chart so we must be very careful. The first on the top is gallons per minute. On the bottom it's a flow rate of liters per hour. They said according to our system idealized for the Sol 25 and the 27 plus collectors we need to hit somewhere near 300 gallons per, per hour which was the equivalent of 1.3 gallons per minute. I can set my pump and my system to ideally do 1.3 gallons. That is the sweet spot. Any lower I'm leaving heat into the collectors and I'm not extracting it. And any faster I'm still extracting the heat but I'm using more electrical energy to get that heat extracted and moved from the collectors down to my storage tank. So 1.3 gallons is a sweet spot and what they're saying is if I go across to our right, this is a European connotation that comma is actually a period, they're stating that we are somewhere near 19 feet of head pressure that I could have overcome. So that's really telling me if I had an open loop system, I could lift that fluid 19 feet. In a closed loop system, our fluid losses are phenomenally less, very much less, almost to the point where we don't have to calculate all of that system. We do need to calculate what our fluid pressure to set the system is. There is a head pressure that we have to overcome and there are a few rough rules to, to follow. If I look at a pump 
in this system and I'm looking at what's going on here what we're saying and just to rehit this again is that on this chart right here the pressure in height is up to 19 feet of head pressure in a closed loop system that closed loop pressures that we're going to envelop are half a PSI to maybe five PSI. All of that system has inherent loss to it, but they're very phenomenally lower. We can pull up the copper handbook and look at what the pressure loss is for a three quarter inch stick of copper piping. Then we can look at 90 degree elbows and we can then calculate how many collectors are on there and what the pressure drop per collector is. But for a closed loop system, we're in real good shape. There are a few rules that we have to be very careful about. Let's look at this for what the pressurized system to set the system at. This is just the head pressure, which is not the same as the pressure of the system that is running. 